Hey everyone, it's um, it's been a while. It's good to see you. And um, here I am in St George's Hospital in, uh, but definitely not the tiniest room in the world. Possibly not far off. Um, I don't know what it is, maybe three meters by two and a half meters. Uh, there isn't a lot of space in here. Uh, but here I am, and I've been here three weeks, and uh, I've been doing daily updates over on Facebook. And actually, it's taken me so long every day to attempt to send the video from my phone to my laptop, to then upload it from my laptop to Facebook. Uh, it's been impossible to send videos to Kelly to send on to people. So hence, no updates from me. I hope you um, have been able to catch up with the news in some form, either, either over on Facebook or via people who are on Facebook. Uh, but here I am, I'm still alive and kicking and you'll see, well, I've got a hat on because I'm cold. But you'll see all of this has gone and all of this hair on my head has gone and pretty much everywhere else, in case you needed to know that. Um, <clears throat> So, three weeks today, I arrived, and the first day was very mm, nothing, flat really, in a way. Uh, I got into my new room and unpacked stuff and figured out where stuff was going to go. I had my central line put in, so that's my central line, which is goes into my neck and then directly down into my heart. and. Off of it, they've got three lumens that can then be used to take blood, uh, give blood, give transfusions, give medication. Um, so that's been that's been in and pretty uncomfortable for three weeks. I have to say, I can't lie on my right side because it feels like it pulls on my neck, or the or the needle that's in there sticks into my neck. Um, so day two was where it all really started with six days of chemo. And I actually dealt with the chemo pretty well. Um, not a lot happened in the first five days of that. Um, and uh, I kind of got used to the drug. It was three times a day. And, uh, a, a short injection, hand-delivered injection in the morning. A bag of chemotherapy drug in the afternoon. And then another hand-delivered injection in the evening. Um, Day six is where it all kind of changed a bit. So there's a drug called malafalan, and it's it is the the notorious drug, where they say eat ice, eat ice creams. They make you eat ice for half an hour before it. They encourage you to eat ice during the time that it's given. It's only a thirty minute bag, and then they encourage you to eat ice afterwards. And I thought I did well with it. Basically, what malafalan does is burn your insides. So it burns from your, it burns all your mucosa from your mouth down to your arsehole. Um, and it will affect everyone differently. So I had the malafalan and boy, I scoffed about two big jugs of ice cubes in that time. And I had 11 ice lollies. Kelly had to bring me in some extras. And I thought, I'm sweet with the ice, I've done it. I'm like, I'm okay. And the next day I think I probably was okay. And then after that was when the mucositis kicked in. And boy, it was grim. It was uh, my whole of the inside of my mouth puffed up. It was, it had ulcers, sores, uh, a struggle to swallow. It went down into my throat. So painful to swallow anything. Um, it was, it was awful. I wasn't sick. They gave me, a, um, IV, uh, anti-sickness all along. Actually, I lied about the first day of chemo being okay. I was violently sick after they started. Um, and from then they went to kind of twice daily IV anti-sickness. And then, uh, the mucositis was bad. They ended up fitting a, uh, I saw the palliative team care and they fitted a syringe driver um, to give me a constant stream of morphine, 
just to manage the pain. Uh, we decided that the morphine wasn't working, so they changed it to a drug called oxycodone, which was doing okay for about the first five or six hours. And then I went to sleep and sadly woke up having the most horrendous real-time nightmare of my entire family being bludgeoned and beaten. And, um, and it was, I pressed the, my buzzer. This was at one o'clock in the morning. And I said, you need to take the syringe driver out. And they're like, but we can't, we, you've got pain. I said, I'll take the pain. I am not closing my eyes again. So either get me two matchsticks that prop my eyes open so I don't sleep or stop the oxycodone. So they stopped the oxycodone and after that, we decided not to go back to the syringe driver. We just have Oromorph daily. <clears throat> so I just went with liquid morphine. And that seemed to manage it quite well. And I did get through those few days. It was pretty horrific. Uh, and it, it was struggle to eat, struggle to sip water, the pain of just sipping water. Um, I couldn't eat toast because it was too crunchy. I had too many edges, too many bits. It, my mouth healed quite quickly. They gave me um, two different types of mouthwash and the pain went down kind of more deep into my throat here. I was lucky that I avoided kind of this bit of pain down here. Um, but it was a grim, a grim few days. Um, so straight after the Malafalan day, I had my stem cell transplant. So that was two weeks ago today. So um, they count, they start counting from your day of transplant, which is day zero. So it's your rebirth day. So that's, I'm on day plus 14 now. And the stem cell transplant was a bit of nothing really. An hour, um, nine bags of my cells were given back to me. Um, and that was, that was all pretty straightforward. Um, and then what they're waiting for, really, so at that, at that point you become, within the next couple of days, you are likely to become neutropenic, which means your neutrophils, your white blood cell count, drops to zero, which means you have zero immunity. Um, they will let you out of hospital when you hit one. Um, so I spent a couple of days at zero, <coughs> and... I then went to point one, I then went to point two, then jumped to point four, jumped to point five. It was all fairly fast. And yesterday I jumped to just over one, which was quite a leap. I have been having the injections in my tummy to help increase the white blood cell count. Um, so, and, and the weekend saw me with just the most horrendous diarrhea. So the mucositis basically went to my guts they also think there was, in part, something to do with the amount of IV fluids, antibiotics. Um, they gave me some antibiotics, just a very low level infection. I had a, few, a bit of peaky, peaky temperature. Um, so they think that all contributed to it. So I had a couple of days of really bad, just sitting on the loo, awful. Anything I ate went straight through. You might not want to know this. You might not want to know this. <clears throat> anyway, it was grim. Um, but the good news is that today they told me I can go home tomorrow. Woo, woo. So tomorrow, which is Wednesday the 25th, I'm going home, which is uh, about a week early. So my consultant came to see me yesterday and said, really, I know it's been grim. And at the same time, it's been pretty smooth. You've, you've gone through very smoothly. And um, which I'm so happy about, and I'm so happy to get home to eat some fresh food, despite all the list of things that I can't eat, to eat some fresh food, and just to be with my girls and my fluffy boy, and just to be in my home. I haven't left this room other than to walk the corridors uh, for three weeks. And as I said, it's tiny. It was adorned with many pictures, posters, cards, quotes. I covered the back of the loo door, covered this wall. People had sent me, I don't know, maybe 
70, 80, 90 different things, which is just amazing. Some of you will have sent that stuff. Some from people that I know, some from people that I have never met. Um, so I'm ready to go home and this is then the next chapter. So up to day 100, I will still be isolating at home. I'm at high risk of infection because my neutrophils are still low. And, uh, but day 100, I then go back on to, back into the care of my oncologist rather than my transplant consultant. And from there, we look at kind of maintenance plans and what next. They'll do a PET scan and things like that. So um, there's tons going on. And I packed my case, which I did this morning, and I'm completely exhausted. I told Kelly that I was going to go home tomorrow and mow the lawn. But I think I won't be mowing the lawn tomorrow. Um, I think I won't have enough energy ready for very much at all. So um, this is lovely Morella. I'm just recording a video, Morella, but which, which you're very welcome to be in for it. Um, but otherwise, can I finish it? Okay, I'll only be, I'll be a minute. Is that all right? Yeah, you just buzz me one minute. I'll buzz you. Yeah, thank you, Morella. Um, that's lovely Morella, who's been one of the nurses who've been looking after me. The team have been absolutely incredible. I've done my best to capture everyone's name. It feels really important to, to know people's names. Um, but they've been extraordinary. Uh, really how they've cared for me and that goes from everyone from the man who comes in Tarek who cleans my toilet and my bathroom through to the consultants and the doctors and in between all the nurses and sisters and healthcare assistants and the people that cook my food and bring my food and all of these stuff <clears throat> it's just been quite incredible so I'm very blessed I feel very blessed and I feel very blessed to have this massive outpouring of love on Facebook. People have tuned in every day to the video. Uh, they've commented. Uh, some of you will have, have sent love every day. And there's been healing circles and healing groups and lots of people holding me in prayer. Prayer, I mean, in the kind of broadest sense of the word. So um, it's been a very... Um, turbulent it's kind of back to the real paradox again of it's been turbulent and at the same time it's been smooth <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's this bit again it's one the other side of the coin so I'm gonna give you an update when I get home and I'll let you know how things are going on things are getting on uh, as you know from our last update we'd given money to our families which was amazing since then, Manu's run her 10K and raised more money for the fund. So we're kind of, I'm into rest mode now for 100 days and healing and repairing and recovering. And, um, uh, and at the same time, I will be starting to think with Kelly about how we make more money for Willow Tree because we need to keep giving. So this hasn't ended. So I'm going to sign off because otherwise Morella might get grumpy, um, which is fine. And I'm gonna send you lots of love. And um, yeah, I can't wait to hear from you. I can't wait to get some of your messages flooding through. I'm gonna post this on, uh, we'll send this out to everyone who's donated to the Willow Tree. We'll put it on the Willow Tree website. I'll put it up on LinkedIn. So wherever you're tuning in from, thank you so much. Thank you for holding all of us in prayer and thought. And I send you lots of love and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.